So, I'm not 100% sure where I left off in the explanation the last time we told Sporimaisius. So I'll read a little bit of just the story. So, after the second time where he fell with the wine this time, he fell asleep, a little social situation where he got off the derech. So he asked his Misharish, who was his body, Where am I in this world? Now, Rav Shik writes, that, writes, writes on this, is a Rabbeinu Zechel Ba'omer, Shekach Tzarek Lihiyoz Minhag Yari Hashem, people who fear God, should have this custom. Should take it from Yad, so immediately when you wake up in the morning, now imagine, you know, been in dreamland, right? order them so you wake up from your sleep. that you already should by thinking about the next world. Is so what am I doing in this world? Adam his because a person has to get himself ready in his mind. The shol es atzmo to ask himself, ani what am I doing with my life? And if a person doesn't really think about what he's doing with his life, because look, <coughs> we're on a uh, Ferris wheel, and it's a wonderful ride, but eventually it stops, and the wheel stops going around, and you're off. So he said, If not, then he can spend days and years, and he doesn't know where he is. So the chen sarich and the yashiv is dato b'kol yom mechadar. So every day he has to settle his mind and say, "What am I going to do today? Where am I in this world today? What do I need to do?" Let's go on with this story of the shachaylos rabo. So he says, "Excuse me, v'siper lo hamisharish." So that his body says to him, he says, um, "What does he say?" He says, "He says saw the whole story about what happened, how he drank, and so on and so forth." And then he says, Shechaylus Rabbos Chal Chusham. And there were a lot of different soldiers. All different kinds of armies went by. The Shechaylus Rabbos Merkav, and there was a special one that was carrying the princess. Shechaylus Rabbos Chal Chusham. And then she got out of the, 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 her coach. <coughs> she came over to him. She cried on him. And she was crying. And she says, Sheyesh Rachmanus Alai Ba'olach. Let there be mercy upon me and upon you. So, we see over here that the the Shechina is inside of us, right? She's the one that's really, really calling us, calling us all the time, trying to talk to us, trying to tell us to come back to her, to make a unity with her. And so she says, you know, what a pity for you and for me too. And then she goes on and she says, So then the story was that she took off her scarf, she cried some tears, and she wrote on the scarf magic words. Or let's just say words. She wrote some special words. Uh, so then, the second of the king, this tzaddik, who wants to be a tzaddik, or is a tzaddik, is working with the Shechina, uh, exactly different ways, how, how in fact does it work, because maybe it's all one and the same thing. Anyway, he notices this scarf. And so the second of the king, uh, excuse me, the second in command, then he's a vishal, it's a masharish, minds out, where'd this come from, this scarf? So he answers that she wrote them to you with tears. So he said, So he started to read the letters, and he started to see everything. And then all the, that she, all the suffering that she went, all how she's crying out to him all the time, but she can't reach him. But now she's not where she was originally, where you originally found her. Inside of yourself, she, you found the sweetness of your soul for a moment. She's not so easy to find anymore. This is what you need to do. You need to go out and you need to find a mountain made out of gold. And a fort that's made out of pearls. That's where you're going to find me. Now Rav Shik writes like this and he explains. This is the weirdest part of the story. Because the other part of the story is we can understand that sometimes you fall. So you fall. And you try to get yourself back up again. But what's this got to do with a uh, pearl, uh, a mountain of gold and a, and a pearl uh, fort? So he says, he, he says, the secret of this is, This is a hint and an understanding of this Pasuk. 
he says it's a puzzle. It's actually brought in, in a Gemara and Sukkah. He says Sadikim nidme lechem kahar gaboa. So people who are righteous, it appears to them that there's a big tall mountain. Ki ayetzahar misgaver mispashed maod maod al the Sadikim because the people who really want to try to be good, it's that you and me, is we want to try to become Sadikim. We have tremendous yetzahara on us. So he said that yetzahara is growing and trying to overcome us. And the truth is, you need to know like this. That every bit of struggle, every to- every bit of toil, when you get up and you go to Minyan, when you get up and you you uh, you go to learn, uh, when you overcome certain different kinds of appetites that you may have and try to keep them under control, that up above, even though that you're not 100% successful, and you're trying to get there, you keep trying and trying to get there, that's very, very important up above in the spiritual world. It's like something that's worth gold, that you can't get any place else. Like the story of the miser in this world who came to heaven and he wanted to bring some pennies for this world, that doesn't work. The only thing that works in the next world is your attempt to be able to try to get to the next world. Mivsar Shar Margolios, that, that uh, so it's like uh, a mountain of gold and, and, and a fortress of, uh, of pearls. Gemosha Amar Rabbein Nezal, Rabbein Nezal says like this, Bar Yisrael Hu Yalom B'Kesem Melech, every single Jew is a precious jewel in the crown of the king. The Chain Habas Melech, so there it's like this, the, 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 the daughter of the king, that is, you're in the, you're, your Shehiya Shechina, your Shechina, the Shechina that's inside of you. Nims says, Bekal Makam, she's everywhere. Shabbat Adam Ma'od, Kasha Yigiyazah, Betir Chazah, Babadah Zashem Yizbor, Kahar Hazan. But to try to reach her, and you know that she's there, but to try to get yourself under control, that's not easy. That's like a mountain of gold that you have to try to get in front of you. I thought Pekain, Allah of Leda, but even so, on this person who's trying to get close to the Shechina, it's important to him to know that this mountain of gold, it's like golden, it's it's like absolute ultimate spiritual gold in the next world. Every single effort that you made, every time that you try to do something. Any Jewish man or woman who makes an effort to come close to Hashem, that person is like a precious jewel in the crown of the king. And in that crown, you find the Shechina. So therefore, a person constantly has to fortify himself. Even though you find yourself in situations that you don't know how to get out of. You lost your temper completely. You're in a big fight with somebody. Or you get some kind of other trouble. Whatever it is, there's so many different kinds. You tell me, there's different kinds of troubles that we have in our lives. Every day. And it's bad. It's very bitter for you. Whatever's going through. And life is hard. Maybe you don't have money. Maybe you're sick. Maybe your children. Oh, so I'm trying to think of things. But even so that this is happening, gird yourself more. Nobody's going to take away the war, reward that you get. So the main thing is to be able to strengthen yourself, fortify yourself, and you have to know that what he said is Baki Ba'ayl, Baki Bashuv. Things can go swimmingly and get in trouble that way. Things can fall apart and you'd be trouble over there. You have to realize that the Shrin is every place, that you could reach her in every place. And that should be behind many of the things that you have. And the reason for them we don't know because we're so limited in our ability to understand. So now he leaves his Sharish behind. So he said, Rav Shik writes, Vihine, Megia Ziman, Shatsrich of Hanir, as called Elo Svibo. You have to abandon what you thought was really, you know, the big car, or the big house, or whatever it is that you thought was really important to you. That it called you back from looking for the Shechina. 
What is this that you really want? It's the revelation of the godliness in the world. The revelation of the fact that even in this limited world, this limited life that we have, there's eternity here. So therefore he goes by himself and he's going to find this Shina. He says now, this second to the king, this one who is looking for his Shina, it's every single Jewish person. It's up to you and me to make an effort to be able to, what? To find our root, the root of Kedusha that's within inside of us that should reveal itself to us. So you have to go many years for this. It's not something you get overnight. You want to come to a level where you have still sweetness. As, as we said, the noam, the, the sweetness, the pleasantment of our king. You're going to have to work on this for many years. Don't give up. Don't give up hope in any way even though the things are looking like it's just never going to work for you. So now this, this person, this Jewish person, or this, as we said before, the real true tzaddik, so he says to himself, he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. The life that I normally live, I'm not going to find something which is a mountain of gold and, and, uh, and a fortress of, of pearls. It doesn't exist here. So this world, he says, is called the civilization. So we see a world that is full of all different kinds of things. So he says there's inert things, sameach, grasses and things that grow. Chai, which is animal life, and medaber, there's all kinds of people. There's all of these things are around us growing and living and existing. And he says, he says, it's like all of them, teva. this is nature. So it looks like it should look at this as, this is reality. This is what nature is. Let me see. Mikra, mazel, so everything is happenstance. It's just your luck. You know, you've got the right luck, you've got the right bracho. But this is not the case when a person merits and he really is thinking only about eternity and about his spirituality. How does he get there? He gets there, he says, this is Rabbi Nekodesh, comes over this idea over and over again, that by talking to God, by praying, learning how to pray, the main thing that we see by Kabbalists, the main thing that we see by Kabbalists that brought over here by Rabbi Nekodesh is learning how to pray. How do we pray? So many people are counting, well, I know the Shulchan Aruch, and I know this, and these are important things. Because anything that you do has to be done in the right way. But that's not the end. The end, that's really a basis, a groundwork for coming close to Hashem, which has to be done in prayer. So how does a person overcome all the difficulties that we have? So so you have to get out of the regular, normal practices. You have to go someplace, like he says, to be able to communicate with all of the Midbar. So where do you go? You go to the desert. Now, a lot of times people think that if you want to be, I did this for years, I'm going to tell you, that, that you need to go someplace outside of your house, outside of your car, outside of your place. But he says you he, he have to go to a desert. Now, the word midbar means desert. But if you look at the roof of the word, the word is, the root of the word is midaber, speaking. So, so the, the desert, he means here, is really a metaphor for the word speaking. We have to realize that we need to recognize that God is right here with us. The rabbis say like this in Shir Hashirim, he brings the present, uh, and there's really pleasantness and sweetness from your words. Because speaking to God is a beautiful thing. But when you make yourself accustomed to speak to God, even though you see yourself in the midst of the city, you see that in the midst of your family and your house and all the different places, but you can speak to God there. He calls those who yotzim ha'olim because this will take you from out of the world because the God who created you is not physical. He can be reached in prayer. He can be reached in conversation. He can be reached in speaking. And this is what he means by the desert. Yehu davak bo yisbarach because when you start to speak to God then you're saying, hey, wait a minute. Everything is not just physical physicality. 
There's also something this is spiritual here, and I can speak to it. I want to speak because that's really my origin. That's the law shina that's inside of me. midbar. So this is like a desert. Lashon dibor. But the desert, this desert he's talking about, is a desert that has is where the physical part is not important. What is important? The speaking. The speaking. Behaving. Shabayishov im Adam Urev Bain Abrios, a Rachoki Mimani is Bark, and he thinks this is it looks like this. That if you're amongst people and you go to the different places where people are talking, and you listen to them talk and they talk about other people, and they talk about money and how to make money, and they talk about this and they talk about that. And it looks like there's no God in this world because you know, where's the spirituality? Sham Lo Nimsa Harshal Zahov Mibsa Shar Margalios, you won't find what you're looking for. In those places, higher the word mountain, it's a remez, it's a hint, an allusion to al hachashibo shel bar yisrael on the importance of a Jewish man, Jewish man or woman. Kamosh amach amenu gedoshim, like the rabbis say, is the Gemara tzedikim nidme lechem kahar. They said like before, said it looks like tzedikim are like a mountain. Kehay yitzharim is gavra galeich meod because the yitzhar is always coming at you and trying to pull you away from this prayer trying to pull you into the social group. It's trying to pull you into business. It's trying to pull you into whatever it can pull you to keep you away. You're bad thoughts. And so it looks like to a person that he's not going to be able to overcome the circumstances of his life. He called Any time that you, who are the tzaddik, you and me, with the tzaddikim, any time we want to do something for Hashem, but if you really want to do it, you want to start learning every day, you want to start listening to the shir every day, there's going to be things that are going to stop you. But, on, but the truth is on, on him, this person, that he has to know, up above, that every single struggle, every toil, every difficulty that you encounter in order to try to reach a way to get close to Hashem, this is gold. Which he said before, every single Jew, Jewish person is, is, a, is a jewel in the crown of the king. So this crown, this crown of the king, that is the mountain of, of the fort, the fortress of Pearl. So therefore, this Shani the Melech, the person who wants to be a tzaddik. This idea of the mountain of gold, the fortress of pearls. You can't reach it. If your life is a physical life and physicality and having more money or having more success or succeeding, uh, overcoming somebody who's bothering you or whatever it would be, the test that you're placed into, as long as you think that that's what you need to do, this is Hevle Olam Haza, this is the Hevle, this is the hot air of this world, which really has no substance. So that's it for today. I hope that we got something out of it. God bless you. Have a wonderful Shabbos and sweet things only enjoy.